Um, this is the three o'clock nap, so don't forget to relax. Uh, my name is Tyson Harding, and I've been uh, at New Dawn for about three and a half years now. So uh, I'm really excited to be here and teach this class. Hope you guys are having a good conference so far. Uh, I consider myself a just wear expert. Uh, doesn't mean I know everything about just wear, but I know a lot about just wear. Just as as some of you who are already live on JustWare or using JustWare, I would consider you JustWare experts or experts in what, what you do in your roles, depending on what your position at, at your office is. So I kind of wanted to just ask a couple questions. Uh, I'd like this to be an open discussion, so don't, don't, feel like, uh, don't feel like you can't raise your hand and, or just shout out a question at me in the middle of something. I like to have kind of an open environment, so I don't want this to be you know, pure lecture or whatever. So if you have a question on, on something, I'm showing or a unique thing that you guys are doing in your office. Uh, so before I get started, I kind of want to ask, we're kind of gauge where we're at. So I know we have some customers that I recognize uh, with JustWare that are, are in implementation. I work in project management on one of the implementation teams, so some of you may have worked with some of us or not. I know there's some prospects here that are investigating JustWare, so you should all Everyone who has just for should talk to them and tell them what to say. Or, or the opposite, be truthful, whatever. Um, you have a and some are in implementation. So, is there, if I show hands, how many are using just for currently? Okay, about half. How many are in implementation? Meaning they have just for working with one of the teams. And how many are investigating just for? Lucky one here. All right, sounds good. So how many? So another question: uh, How many are using our docket tool, our docket management tool? One. Is that? Oh, we got a couple shy, shy ladies over here. So a couple people using the docket management tool. Okay. So what this class is is calendaring and managing events, and probably the second half of the class we're going to really hit on docket management, maybe the, the last three quarters of it. Uh, there's a couple things in JustWare that you, know, you may not need the full docket management tool, but sometimes there's some tools and stuff that we'll train you on during admin training, and you'll go through the implementation phase and configuration, and you might have forgotten or not ever revert back to using that tool or functionality. So I'm going to show you uh, show you a couple of those things. Um, all the material I'm going to share uh, is in the JustWare admin guide. So if you're inside the JustWare application, most of you know you can hit F1, the the help guide, you can search for docket. Everything's there. Uh, I also have a stack of, there's some, unfortunately there's some sitting room where we are teaching this class tomorrow morning. So that, if that um, I do have a stack of business cards up here. So before I get too far in it, if you want to grab one on your way out, feel free to contact me. I can shoot you over any material on my slides or anything I've shown you today. Um, as well as I tried to pass around one of those little survey slips you may have seen in some of the other classes. Uh, I'd really like your feedback. I do a lot of training, a lot of teaching with all of our customers traveling on site, and I'm always looking, to how, looking for better ways to teach and present material so that you guys can understand that. After all, you, most of you are the end users or your people who have to train end users to use JustWare. So I want to know what, what works best for you. So please be honest, honest <coughs> brutally honest if, if, if it takes that. So uh, I'd love that. So first off, <coughs> I would like to let me flip over to. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what do I have? <laughs> that is my wife. And are my two daughters, uh, Hazel on the right, she's four, Hattie is two, and they keep us pretty busy. So. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of what slide I have. <laughs> I don't remember anything. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is what I'll get into. It might be more for a court type setting, and when I get into talking about the docket management tool, uh, I know a lot of our Quartz customers use that. Uh, however, I think there's a couple people from Kootenai County. Is that true? Yep, back in the back. Okay, so we, uh, one of the projects I just worked on was a countywide prosecuting office in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And they're actually using the docket management tool to help with their schedule. So I may put somebody on the spot back there and kind of tell us how they're using it. We, we helped them out with that. But So it's not just for Quartz. It, it's a good calendaring tool that, that you can use whether you're a court environment, prosecutor environment, uh, even uh, I've had a defender 
project use the, the calendaring tool. So before we get going though, how many of you use default event involvements? Anybody? We got a couple of hands raised. By raise of hands, who has not ever heard of default event involvements or who is not using default event involvements? Wow. So this is one of those things that we show, you know, maybe at the beginning of implementation, part of our Justware admin training. And, you know, maybe we get going on JDA documents, reports, and configuring code tables. We are teaching this class in the morning, so. Uh, and you maybe just, you know, we get busy with other stuff, and so we don't end up configuring it. So one of the things that I'd like to show you is default event involved people. Uh, and so a lot of times we'll have customers, let me drag this over. You all have seen the, or most of you have seen the event snap in. Here I have uh, just a pretty basic uh, criminal misdemeanor case, not a whole lot of information on it, most of my cases are pretty pretty bare, but I have some agencies, some involved parties, you know, simple defendant, an officer, public defender, prosecuting attorney, uh, one charge, and there's one event, there's been an arraignment. Uh, and we'll go over some of this here in a second, but one of the things you'll notice is everywhere where we have an event, or correspondence, or task, we have involved people. So one of the cool things that we can do is have default event of all people. So sometimes some of our customers are here and they'll create, I just have a generic hearing, so I'm going to add a generic hearing here in my event snap in and save. You'll notice that down below after I save in our event of all people snap in, it'll be empty. Oh, maybe not. I lied. <laughs> One second. Pause while the person behind the curtain fixes something really quick. <laughs> what you saw was actually the cool thing I was going to show you. So oftentimes, what we'll have... Oh, I ruined the surprise there. I right, know. Okay, so when you add a hearing or when you add an event, any type of event, I chose hearing in Justware, You'll notice that no people showed up down in an event of all people. So oftentimes our customers will come in here and they want to keep track. This attended field, I've just renamed and, and repurposed a, a flag field. A lot of times we'll have customers or, or agencies that want to keep attendance of, of who was there. So they'll come in here and they'll add, you know, here, if I click in the drop down, here's a list of my case involved parties, right? So uh, if I add, you know, the defendant, Fernando Sucre. And I wanted to add the public defender was there. Obviously, it was an arraignment. The public defender might have been there. The prosecuting attorney, uh, the judge. So there's Judge Joe Brown. So you could come in here and manually add that, as well as use our reminder time prior to events, our email. If I scroll over, for any of you that are using this function, reminder time prior to event and email and pop up. Do we have any customers in here that are using this functionality? Email pop up if you're familiar with Outlook. Okay, so we got some back here. If you check these boxes, you can set you know five minutes. Maybe uh, well, that's for the defendant. That would probably not work. But Judge Joe Brown or or public defender, prosecuting attorney, or whatever's logged into Justware, we can set a five minute reminder. Uh, don't forget to go to that hearing. Pop up will come up on our screen in Justware. You could also have an email, so an email will get shot off from Justware saying, hey, in five minutes you you got a hearing or you got an appointment or you have a you know a special appointment, in judges chamber, whatever. That's a manual process. We can default those values in, like I just mentioned, and you actually saw that. Um, you should have seen it first, but I already showed you. Uh, and that's in tools. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and show you how, how I can get to that and how I can automate some of that. And it brings a lot of value and some automation and saves some mundane one by one adding of people that are always going to be a part of the same events. So if I go to system administration, yeah, you have a question. Do you have to actually have JustWare on their computer and opened up to get the email, or if no. their email address is in our JustWare, it'll email them? That's a great question. So for those who didn't hear, she wondered if to get the email, if they had to have JustWare open on their computers. And the answer to that is no. So for, for those of you who know, all the emails are stored on the JustWare name record. So as long as there's an email associated with that name record and you have all the maintenance console stuff set up with your SMTP server to, to have the email notification sent, if you're already using that functionality in JustWare, they can get it. So technically, you know, you could send an email to your defendant if you have the defendant's email or, or whoever's email address. For the pop-up, it's the opposite. Yeah, the pop-up's actually going to be in the, inside the JustWare application. So great question. So if I go to, feel free to shout out if I don't see your hand, just, just yell at me. 
So you go to System Administration and Tools, and down near the bottom, I guess in the middle, we have a section called Default Event Involved People. So on the left hand side, I have a list of all my events, and my code tables are very small <coughs> because I just created this kind of linked database for this training conference. You guys' code tables might be super large, or if you haven't begun yet, you'll start kind of somewhere around here with just some defaults. And as most of you are aware, tasks, events, documents, and correspondence all kind of fall into that same super group up there in event. They just have a different uh, master code or a different category of event. So we can default event involved people, or we can default involved people on any one of these tasks. So I'm a big fan of sorting, sorting and filtering. So you'll notice you can kind of see that little gray triangle there. If you've been to some of our basic just work classes, I can sort. Obviously, this is alphabetical order. I can sort by description on here. A is easy to A, however I want. I actually really like to use the filter, or the little funnel option over here. So I just want to see events, because that's what I'm dealing with right now. So I'm going to use that filter and go to event. And now I see only my events here. That to me is really useful. Just to, I'm pretty obsessive compulsive. If you guys come to the night at New Dawn, I'll give you a prize if you can find my desk. I feel like I'm pretty organized. And it drives me nuts when there's a lot of tabs open. So I like to have my screens as clean as possible. Um, some of you may have those same thoughts. Some of you may have, may have the desktop with icons all over your desktop. I'm not one of those. Um, so, here I have a list. so here I have a list of my events, and I want to go to hearing, and I want people to be automatically involved. And what this will do, here over on the left, I have hearing selected. Over on the right, I have another snap in that says default event involved people. When I click the green plus sign, I get a pivot table, if you've seen that functionality in JustWork. These are all my event involvements from my case involved party code table. So I could have any one of these. So I'm going to say I want the defendant, um, I want the public defender, and I want the prosecuting attorney. So those three. I'm going to go ahead and save. So those are default. And just like you saw earlier when I ruined my big surprise, I'm going to refresh here and add a hearing. And you'll notice when I add the hearing down below in event involved people, those three people automatically added. I don't have to have a court clerk or anybody who's who's keeping track of that event, whoever's managing that schedule. I don't have to have them add each row by row, search for the name, just like that. So there's one caveat. These people, they have to be involvements here. So what it did is I have these three checked. I have the defendant, the prosecuting attorney, and the public defendant. So when I was in my event snap-in and I added the hearing, it did this, basically JustWare, if you can imagine, I'm a very visual learner. So what JustWare did, JustWare went to the Agencies Involved Parties tab, it went to the Case Involved Parties snap, and then it said, okay, these three involvement types are checked, defendant, prosecuting attorney, and public defender. Well, let me see if those involvement types are on my case. They are, so those three got added as involved people to my case. Now, if there wasn't a, there's obviously gonna be a defendant because we all know that in JustWare to even save a case, you have to have a PIP, or primary involved person. So let's say there wasn't a public defender assigned yet. Well, it still would have defaulted in Atticus Finch, our prosecuting attorney, and Fernando Sucre, our defendant. However, when it went over to the case involved party snap-in to find those three involvements, it wouldn't have found public defender, so it just wouldn't have added, added it to the, to the case. So that can, that can be huge. I don't know if there are any questions on that. I'm about to take it one step further with we can default in reminder times, uh, pop up an email. Any questions on that so far? Pretty straightforward question. The manual yeah. entry on agencies and involved parties, if I have four different judges, that's where I'm going to determine which one I want, or if I have four prosecuting attorneys. I'm it would add. Enter here you would add. Jane Doe instead of Atticus Finch. Here you would, in prosecuting, in the case of all parties, snap if I understood your question, uh, if I understood what you were, what you were asking. If you had multiple prosecuting attorneys on the case, so for example, we can just add one, another, another one really quick. So we'll add Donald Self. So if I had two, and I would have added that hearing and saved, it would have thrown both of those prosecuting attorneys as event involved people. So if everybody caught that question, we had all three. Well, because there were two of those involvement types, Donald Self would also be on this. And if I had him later, if you had him later, it's not going to do it. And, and there are some business rules. So if you've been to any of our business rules classes, there are definite possibilities. That is, I'm not going to say it's impossible. It's very possible to do with business rules, but they have to be there before, before that gets added. Okay. 
So I'm going to take it one step further. Again, this is just some out-of-the-box tools in JustWare, some automation that sometimes we forget that are actually there without even using the docket management tool and just managing events and how we can show up our calendars. So, you know, when I log into JustWare, for those of you who've seen it, if I look at my JustWare, you know, if I was involved on an event, I'm a JustWare user, that's where my events show up. If I'm an event involved person, uh, I have a calendar right here. It's much like an Outlook calendar or an email calendar that you guys may be familiar with. So if I had a hearing or I went to, you know, uh, Atticus Finch's calendar, I would see that event show up whatever time I scheduled that for. Okay, so what I want to do is, let's say, you know, we're a prosecutor's officer. Let's say we're, I don't know if there are any empty seats. There's a couple floor seats. Otherwise, we're teaching this class tomorrow morning uh, at 8.30. Okay, sorry. Um, so let's say I want to have a default time. Maybe I want to have an email send out 30 minutes prior to this specific hearing. I'm going to use hearing just for simplicity's sake. This could obviously be any number or, or any one of your events that you guys have set up in your code tables. An appointment, if you're a prosecutor shop, you might have you know, an appointment with the defendant, so you want you know, maybe a 15 minute email reminder uh, sent to you prior to, prior to that, so you can just get a reminder or a pop-up in JustWare if you're working on other cases but you want a pop-up reminder, we can do that. So that's also done in system administration <coughs> and tools. And down at the bottom, we have reminders. So up at the top, we have universal event reminders. I don't have any rows there, but I'm going to add and again, I'm going to use my sorting function because right now they, they could be sorted in any crazy order. In the drop downs, we can't do the filter. Um, however, I can sort. So I'm going to sort so all the tasks are together, all the events are together. And I'm going to scroll down and find my hearing. And here are those options look very familiar to what we saw in our, in our case for event involved people. We have the reminder time prior to event. We also have email and pop up. Well, I said I wanted an email 30 minutes prior to. We have our time drop down list that you guys familiar with. And I said, well, let's just say I want an email and a pop-up. And I'm going to go ahead and save. I'll talk about this section below here in a second if you haven't seen that. But for right now, I'm going to leave it with just this top snap in. So now that I have that configured, I'm going to come over here and refresh on my case. I'm going to add another hearing. So we've kind of added two pieces. We should get default event of all people, as well as the reminder time should come in for 30 minutes with the email and the pop-up uh, checkbox checked. Okay, so I added my three involvements, automatically 30 minutes, email and pop-up are checked. Uh, and you do have to have an email associated with your name right here. Just looking into that, why that didn't select the pop-up for uh, Jessica and Fernando. That's a really good tool, I think, for reminding. I like setting alarms for myself. Uh, it seems like it seems pretty useful. And like I said, oftentimes we have customers that have been using Jesper for years, but they just haven't maybe implemented this type of functionality. So any questions on on those two pieces before we we got one up here and then we got a couple back here. Okay, so it's people who are already in the database, but it can be people who don't have connection to Jester, right? Like a witness? Yeah. Yeah. Or so this system. this list of people got automatically added based on the fact that they were already case in both parties. So you can do it with a witness or a victim, just logging in. Yep, if you have a witness and their name record in JustWare has, has an email on their name record under contact information, mm -hmm. you could have them say, hey, here's an email reminder, just, you know, for, you're going to be a witness in our case tomorrow, or, or, or something like that. Does that answer your yep. question? Yeah, it could be anybody. Just remember that the key point <coughs> is, as JustWare said, I'm a very visual learner, so what it's going to do is when I add the hearing here, First thing it's going to do before it adds people down here is it's going to go to the case involved party, snap in, and say, okay, who are my default involvements? Defendant, public defender, and prosecuting attorney. Those are the ones I set up as default event involved people. Take those three, come back to the event involved people, snap in, and add them here. Before I get to you up front, there was another question back here. This, this is kind of silly, but uh, the pop up reminder is just for, uh, just for users, correct? So we have. Just for court, and then our prosecution uses just for prosecutor. So, and they, they don't talk to each other. Okay, so I was going to ask you. So they're not on the same database, and they don't talk to each other. Right. So we can't. We couldn't use that pop up function. The pop up, no. Right. Okay. Email definitely. Okay. Yep. And we have a lot of customers like that where you know 
prosecutors and courts, different databases, but pull upon JustWare. So a lot of times they use uh, email communication. Obviously, there are some customers that have custom interfaces developed. Because of that, right? You can what? You can't share calendars this way, and they can't. Yeah, you can't share calendars where they don't talk to each other. I mean, obviously, you could look into something with, you know, an interface, you know, an API interface, and you could look into that. Uh, Justice Web, uh, some of our other products that would display those calendars online. Uh, I know the current project I'm working on uh, is going to use Justice Web to display calendars so that anybody, both private, uh, private defense counsel as well as the public defender's office and prosecutors, can all just go to this one spot and see the court calendar. Okay. That answer. Question over here up front. So if you set up the default email to the judge and there's 15 people that are supposed to be in that hearing with the payment, No. So I don't know if, for those of you who didn't hear that question in the back, uh, the question was raised if there are 15 defendants or a defendant and 14 co-defendants or whatever the scenario might be so there are three people and you have it set up to have an email sent to the judge she wondered if for some reason it would send 15 emails to the judge and the answer is no so it's only going to send an email one email to Jessica one email to Atticus one email to Fernando if we had our judge Joe Brown here it would just send one email to him right. would it send it to him if the hearing docket had six cases on it is he going to get six emails uh, yeah, so if it had six cases, yeah, so if there was an email, yep. So again, unless you didn't mark it, you unless you didn't mark it, didn't correct, mark it, yeah. You if, you're, if you're not using that and you only marked it on one, so there are alternative solutions, or is what I'll call them. Basically, if you haven't found out yet, you will. There are about, there's always more than one way to do something in JustWare. So there's an idea that I would say for a business rule where the judge has a docket, right? He might have what I would call a docket or a grouping of events and he's gonna sit in court and he might hear 100 cases in four hours, right? So you obviously don't want 100 emails going to him. But what we could do is set up a business rule and say, okay, 30 minutes, go and check who's got the next docket, send an email to the judge and say, hey, you have a docket at 8.30, here's one email. So there are alternative solutions to, to doing that with the business rule, uh, obviously this, this type of functionality. Yeah, you're right. Question over here. I have universal reminder time. Can that be um, changed per person? For instance, if I wanted to have a 30 minute, 15 minute for attorneys, can that be set up that way? And the second question is email. Can you send the multiple email addresses? Multiple email addresses. Um, we could look at, again, we could look at different ways of doing that. So to answer your first question, with the Universal, close that. See, there you go with my tabs. I don't like to have ton of tabs open there. Um, with the universal event reminder, it is just going to be that that time across the board for, for all events. But if you wanted to have, if I understood you correctly, 45 minutes for the judge, 15 for the prosecutor, 10 for the public defender. Um, not be a universal event reminders probably, but here's where our, our business rule editor is pretty flexible. So. Business rule, there, is a, there are business rule activities for event-involved people, um, and that's where you could specify you know, specific times and specific reminders. Um, your second question to multiple emails, um, that's a great question that I'll probably take away. Uh, so you're saying that the judge has you know, his Outlook County email and he's got a Gmail account that he checks more regularly? Right. Uh, that's, a, that's a great idea. So, uh, I'd, have to, I'd have to look into that. They're in the business rule editor. I know it's possible because I've done it. Because we'll just do a, a semicolon separated list, just like you can do in Outlook with multiple email addresses. I'm not, not exactly sure on, uh, on the universal event reminders. Yeah, you have a question? Yeah. <coughs> what is the what is the recipient of one of the emails see as the sender? Do Perfect. You set, do you set up a you know an email account for customer or something? Great question. So what they see <coughs> is let me show you. I'm going to pull up a maintenance console for those of you who may or may not have seen it. Give me a second to pull that up. Okay, so we have email notification services. Basically here, if I have email notification services set up in JustWare, simply to answer your question, we could have it be whatever. So a lot of times people will do, I don't know, where are you from? You're from Yakima County. Uh, we'd have like no reply at yakimacounty.com or yakimacounty.org. It can be whatever. It doesn't even have to be a real email address. It could be a real email address. If for some reason you wanted somebody to manage that email, if anybody wanted to respond to those, 
you could set it up to be dfessler at yakima.org and and it could, you know, people could potentially reply, but historically, in, in my experience, most people set it up to be like a, a do not reply at, so it looks like it's coming from, you know, the normal county.gov or city.gov address. Um, your other question, What's your other? oh, where I was headed, your kind of leads me into this bottom half. If you've been to any of the business rule classes or the advanced business rule or somebody maybe have alluded to uh, email reminder templates. So we have different types of templates in Justware. You can use the same JDA if you've been to any of the JDA classes. The same JDA fill point uh, functionality. You can create your own uh, email reminder template. So it can be pretty specific. If you want an email that goes out and says, you know, we, I'm trying to think of a, an email that we've set up. Uh, you've been assigned to a new case, or you've been added, Here, here's one that I've, that I've recently done. When a prosecuting attorney gets added as an event evolved person to a new court event, they'll get an email and they'll have a specific email and in the template, because we can use this JDA functionality and fill points and pull stuff from the database, it will say, a new event has been added to this case, case ID 14-145, scheduled for this, show the case title, Fernando Sucre, battery in the third degree, etc. So you can get as far as, I don't know, the, the reason I thought of that, Dan, based off your question is what would the user see? So the email address it comes from could be custom, uh, as well as the actual body of the email could be configured to, to be whatever you want. Any questions on default event involvements and default event reminders before I start diving into dockets? Awesome. Okay. So, as I mentioned, those are just some tools that sometimes we forget about that don't have anything to do uh, with dockets that can be really useful in automating some mundane processes and adding things one by one and configuring time for emails or pop-ups. So here's where we're getting into our, uh, what Justware calls our docket management tool. So before I get into that, I want to talk about some terms and where this is located in Justware. Because I've traveled... <coughs> Different parts. Oh, you have a question over here. Really quick, can I ask you, is there anything that interferes with the sending of that email at that point? So, <coughs> what if the case gets closed? Are you going to still send the email? So, if it's not occurring. So, if there's, a, if there's a future event, so let's say we have an event in October, on October 31st, with the email check, and but the case gets closed before that event, yeah, it'll still get sent. And so, we've so here again, another real life scenario, I've created a business rule that trigger is when a case gets closed, go and find any email checkboxes that are checked and uncheck them. So those are, there are ways to get around that, that same type of scenario. Yeah, shout out, keep shouting out your questions, this is awesome guys. How about um, you just update the event date? <laughs> You update the event date. You could also update the event date. We have a. <coughs> will it delay then the sending of the email? It'll, to the it'll, new date? it'll still send the. Uh, original. It'll still send the original. So another business rule that we've set up is we have a delete event activity. So if the case gets closed, technically there aren't any future events. In some cases there might be, but if the case status gets to closed, trigger could be when the case status gets updated to closed, go and delete future scheduled events. So those are null and void. Well, what if you just continue the hearing from uh, September 16th to September 16th? Update the date. Well, if you update the date, it'll wait until, until, wait until the yep. delivery time period. Yeah, if you update it to the 15th, it'll wait until 30 minutes before that time on the 15th. So, a question over here, and then you have one over here in the green. <laughs> we were told, we said, there's another category in this where you people that just signed a contract. So okay. But um, sorry, we were no problem. <laughs> we, you were we were told that, that defendants could be notified by text message. Yep. So I don't know if I do this because I'm. Uh, I think it's funny, but uh, you can type in. So I have Verizon as a as a carrier, as my cell phone carrier, and so I actually have an email that's my cell phone number two zero eight six zero four six nine nine one at vtext.com. So I've had customers, uh, it's all them, you know, on their SMTP servers, just like it is. I've had customers that will uh, 
put that in as the defendants. Not, not, obviously, we're headed that way. Everybody knows how to text and stuff like that. So they'll put that in as a an email type. So if I open up a, that's a great question. Um, here's my email for Fernando Sucre. So in my email type drop down, I could I could customize that drop down and say like text email. And then here in here in my email address, you know, I type in the the number at vtext.com and then make you, I, I get that all the time from my brother. Uh, he was recently serving a mission in Chile, and I just told him if you ever needed to get a hold of me quickly, then to just send me an email to my phone, so then I would get it as a text. So it was always interesting when I get a text from him. So is that a default thing on all cell phones? Can you just put at you can Google text I, or at AT&T text? Or yep, you can Google. There's a list. It's not like super specific. I don't know if it's like at Sprint or, or at Verizon, but you pull that up on Google and there's a there's a whole list of what your phone number is at your carrier.com. Yeah. Is that where you would add the, the other email address or the plus? Right here? Yeah. Okay. So I could have multiple emails. So you know I could add a, a business email at you know an MDT.com. I could add another one of a personal email, you know, Tyson at gmail.com. So here's multiple emails, so again, to, to your, your question. Apologize I didn't reference those for chess assignments. <laughs> no problem. Look at your browser or something. There you go. <laughs> um, add, an, add an email type in this drop down. You know, maybe we're not using Justice Web, so we replace that one. Maybe we add another additional option that says uh, text email. So, so in addition to answer, to? oh, go ahead. Which one would it get sent to then if you chose email for Fernando uh, The one that's the most recently uh, active, active date uh, is how It'll typically work uh, with business rules and other types of notification right, emails. Outside, outside of that, you know, business rules, we can say go and look at the business email address and send it to that one if they have multiple business. So to further on his response, I know there are some customers out there that are actual like uh, phone service API. That's kind of the, the workaround way is using the, the phone number at Vtex. Um, I haven't specifically worked with any customers, but go with the you know, we'll actually partner with a company that specializes in having like a phone server that will send out those text messages. Um, but I, I, I know Derek and Adam uh, in sales, and I can get in touch with them. I know they kind of mentioned that, that there are some partners out there that will do that. Yeah, just, I don't know if it's jumping ahead, but we're going to get a public interface too where people can update their information. Would that automatically update in this, or does somebody have to go in? So it's not done here, and if I'm. If I'm uh, thinking of what you're thinking of, it's probably Justice Web where they can update yes. their, their information. It, it eventually makes its way into Justice Web to update their, excuse me, to update their email address here. Um, but they wouldn't be doing it inside the Justice Web application. So, was there another question that I, that I missed? Yeah. Well, what I was going to ask was where you got your event. Okay, let me close this. So back on my case. Yeah. Okay. Um, the status, <coughs> like we'll change ours to off. If a future hearing got canceled, we have off in there. If if that status was off, is it still going to send the email? Yeah, if that's if that's popped. It's kind of the same scenario that these ladies up here were asking: is if there's a future event, well, that's and the case gets if closed, you, if the status set off, yeah, it's still gonna. Yeah. So again, there's. There's solutions to, to solve that, you know, maybe not inside a default event reminder, but there's solutions to prevent that. So, yeah, there's always kind of multiple ways in just where to do that. Okay, so I'm going to keep moving along, keep shouting out questions, guys. Um, I have a lot of stuff I can, I can get to. If we don't get to all of it, that's totally cool. Um, and then maybe there'll be some time for questions afterwards as well. I can grab really quick, sorry. Okay. So the tool that I'm referring to is down here under Utilities. It's called Docket Management, and we have a Docket Calendar. So again, kind of maybe my more of my emphasis might be on what a, a court might might do, but I personally think it applies to kind of all types of our agencies. Again, I mentioned that there's a countywide prosecuting office using this tool to uh, schedule events and kind of keep their calendar in their office and they're kind of using it in a unique way. I know I'm working on a current project in uh, Tucson that they are wanting to use uh, the document management uh, tool for their prosecuting office and, and their calendaring as well to try and mimic 
and, and coordinate with the court. Obviously, in most scenarios, the court owns that court schedule and owns that docket schedule, but you know, prosecutors obviously get that schedule from them, so they're trying to mimic it in their, in their system, in their just work. So before I get into it, I was headed this way, and hopefully I'm not too scatterbrained for you. I go all over the country traveling, working on different projects, and I think, and we always joke about this at New Dawn, there's like a hundred different definitions of the word docket. Everybody, no matter where we go, even if they're 45 minutes apart or 15 miles apart, different customers, everybody uses the word docket and it means something completely different. And one of my projects even uses it in various forms. They'll say the word docket and it means this in this context. And they'll use it again five minutes later, but it's a completely different thing they're talking about in another context. So, for what just where, <laughs> calls it. This is the docket management tool. And let me pull this up. Again, there's awesome documentation in our uh, help manual, so if you open up just where and hit F1, all this information is there. Okay, so what we have is we have a calendar docket. So you see up there in the top left, we have a calendar docket. And a calendar docket is comprised of docket instances. So this is, this is some terminology, we're, we're on campus, now I'm giving you like the, the college lecture of like vocabulary that you need to remember for the quiz after class, right? So a calendar, a calendar docket, uh, let's say at the beginning of the year, every, every year in January, we set up our calendar six months in advance, right? Okay, so we're gonna go January through June. Uh, that's our calendar docket, um, and, and we'll have uh, various things that that's comprised of. Calendar docket is comprised of docket instances. So let's say, for example, I have a district court daily arraignments. Every day in district court, I have an arraignment block from 8 to 9. So I'm not, not very big, not very busy, so we do it for an hour, depending on how big your, your agency is. So Monday through Friday, January through June, from 8 to 9, we have a docket instance. So what each docket instance is, is daily. So somebody do the math, six times 30 days, right? Approximately 100, 180, is that right? 180, uh, 180 potential instances. So each day would be its own instance. So if we started our docket, and I'll show this in just where how that looks and it'll make a little bit more sense. Let's shorten up my docket calendar. Let's say I just do it a month at a time. So the month of January. So I have four weeks in January. Let's say they're all full five day weeks or whatever, right? So I have 20 days. So that means I would have 20 instances that make up that calendar docket. Is everybody confused yet? Sure. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it one step further. So those docket instances are comprised of several different things and I'm gonna get into all those different things, but basically it's comprised of events. So we brought up the scenario over here that the judge might have a, a daily, let's, let's take Monday for example. Daily district court docket. Judge is going to meet from eight to nine, and he's going to hear. He's going to he's going to have arraignments. Let's say there's a hundred arraignments. So there could be a hundred arraignment docket events that are a part of that one instance on that specific day that are a part of the, the overall calendar. Hopefully, this will make a little bit more sense once we get inside JustWare. And, and again, feel free to ask questions once I show you the tool. I also have this little graphic. I don't know how hard that is to see. It's probably too small to see on the on our resolution here, so uh, you can come by my computer afterwards and I can show you that. But that's, again, I said I'm a visual learner and sometimes I'll pull that up in, in a class when I'm doing docket training. I totally understand you can't read that, uh, so feel free to come up after class. But what it does is it kind of breaks it down how the docket calendar is comprised of docket instances and those instances have different events, different, different times, you know, because maybe on Mondays we have our arraignment docket instance from 8 to 9, but on Tuesdays, we have it from 10 to 11.30, etc. So they're kind of details within each one. So I'm going to flip back over to just where. Can I interrupt you just now? Yeah, go ahead. Somebody keeps texting me looking for Lindsay. Is Lindsay in here? Yeah. Oh, Lindsay. oh, there you are. They need you back at the hotel now. I don't know how you're going to get there, but they keep texting me. Thanks, Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. 
Okay, Lindsay, we're doing this tomorrow. If you want to come back, I'd love to see you. Okay, so we're going to jump into. Uh, by raising of hands again, I already forgot how many people are, are already using the docket management tool. A couple of people back here, a couple of people. Okay, so for you who have already seen this and are using it, hopefully you'll see some things that maybe you aren't using that you can make or manage. I don't know, just out of curiosity, what's your name back here? Yeah, you. Yeah, Aaron. Aaron? Douglas DA. Yeah. Douglas DA. Mm -hmm. Just out of you, are you one of the ones who manages your, your docket? Mm -hmm. How many instances do you have? How many different dockets do you have? A lot. A lot. So let me show you where we go. This and the reason I asked that is because some of the things I'm about to show you can greatly help in managing that tool. So here, down on the left, and before I get in there, there are kind of two things prerequisites to setting up dockets, and you have to have instance types and docket involved people. So instance types are required. Docket involved people are optional. Now I'm going to show you how to get to that. So you go to system administration. Code tables, cases, docket types. And in here, there's a code table just like any other, only I'm creating docket types. So again, for simplicity's sake and for this training, I've created two docket types, docket instance types. So there's an instance type of district court and an instance type of circuit court. Obviously, you know that is for one agency that I've dealt with. You can kind of use your imaginations and figure out how that might go hand in hand with what you guys are, are doing in your specific agency. Uh, this is going to be required. You're going to at least, leave, at least need one of those. Oh, Lindsay, you came back. <laughs> okay, so I have two instances, district court and circuit court. Down below I said docket involvement types are optional. Uh, they can come in really handy, and I'll show you that. So a lot of times, you know, we'll go into an agency, and they'll have five judges, and those five judges split it up. So judge number one takes week number one, judge number two takes week number two, judge number three takes week number three, etc. And they're kind of on this rotating schedule, or vice versa. They might take 60% of the criminal cases and 40% of the civil, and vice versa. All, all different types of scenarios. So when we set up these dockets, you'll see that you know, for the majority of the time, Judge Joe Brown or something is always on the daily docket arraignment or daily hearing. Anyway, you'll see how that works. But that's where docket involvement types, and I'll show you where that comes up. <coughs> they're kind of like your case involvement type code table, only they're specific to dockets. So that's why it kind of looks similar if you've seen the case involvement party uh, code table, where you type a description of what their involvement might be. So here are my instance types. I'm going to go ahead and close that because I created two of those. And I already have these kind of pre-created. Um, I already have these uh, pre-created for, for sake of time and simplicity. If you have questions afterwards, obviously uh, we can do that. And if we have time, we'll actually go through the manual process of creating one. But I already created some to show you the type of functionality if you haven't seen it. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. So when I asked Erin, right? Mm -hmm. When I asked Erin how many docket instances she has, it's probably going to be more than what I'll show. But if I come down here to this utility and I click on docket management, let me make some of my... Scoot this over. Sorry, guys, with the resolution sometimes on these projectors. It's hard to see. Okay, so there's one more field over here, and that's instance type. So if you remember, those are my two instance types, right, that I just created. I had a district court instance type in my code table, and I had a circuit court instance type. And I actually have four different dockets or four different calendar dockets created. So if you go back to my image, right, top left, I have four of those created. Um, and then inside one of those, we're going to talk about the different instances. So the reason I asked how many Aaron had, yours probably looks a lot bigger than this, right? So it can get pretty heinous to deal with and manage inside this code table. If any of you have ever been inside, you know, the events code table or the documents code table and you have over 100 code tables, it can get crazy. That's where I said I like to use my filtering or funneling, or, or filtering, or sorting. So I can do that in here. This is our stock uh, Dwemel view, or stock XML view session that you guys have seen. So I can sort right now, you know, I can sort by circuit courts, and now all the circuit court ones are together. If, I, if I'm, you know, the court administrator, and I just want to look at uh, the, the circuit court instance type, or if I'm, you know, from prosecutor's office, and we've grouped ours in a different way, uh, I, can, I can sort by that. I can also use this filter. 
so I can just see the district court ones like I showed you earlier in, in the other place. I can just see the circuit court ones. I'm going to remove that filter. There's also something really easy and really slick that we can do. You can get with our support staff, work with your implementation team, or get with account management for those of you who are familiar with Ben and Jeremy. They're awesome to work with. And if you haven't met them here yet, you should definitely should. Um, but over here, I've created two custom docket management screens. One is called circuit docket, and one is called district docket. So when I click on circuit docket, you'll notice now my, my list is filtered down to two. I don't even have to worry about scrolling over to the right and sorting to see all the district dockets first, to see all the circuit dockets first, only seeing my circuit dockets. It's just already there. Just simple, simple view to create. You know, support and account management would be happy to uh, help you hook that up and, and talk with your implementation team as well. Uh, likewise, if I click on district docket, I have that filtered to, you know, I don't have to worry about sorting or anything. I know when I click on district docket that I'm just showing those two. And again, depending on the size of your agency, the size of your you know, showing your production that you guys are, are working on, that may or may not be applicable, but I find that pretty useful. Obviously, my database is pretty simplistic in that I only have four docket calendars set up, but you can see that you know, most courts would have different scenarios for arrangements, for motion hearings, for PTR hearings, grouping our highway patrol, you know, they group all those traffic appearances on a Friday morning, and then group all of our city police, you know, uh, traffic appearances on a, on a Friday afternoon all together. So you can see how that list would just continue to grow and where something like this, creating a custom docket management, you already filtering those off, would come in handy. Um, any questions on, on that piece so far? I'm going to get into how these are built. Okay. So I said I have four dockets. I went back to my generic docket management because it's not too bad to look at. I only have four. So the four docket calendars that I have set up are district daily arraignments. So I kind of used that in my example. I said we're going to start my docket calendar on September 22nd. That's this upcoming Monday and run it through the rest of the year. In fact, all of these are set up to run from next week to the rest of the year. So our district daily arraignments uh, run from uh, Monday through the end of the year, I have a highway <coughs> patrol traffic. I just explained that scenario. You know, maybe we want all our traffic appearances for the highway patrol officers to just come on uh, one day during one session, so they can get there and get taken care of, and not have to worry about the rest of the week. Have uh, a docket calendar for motion hearings. Some of the other scenarios that I've seen in implementation are for trials. So I have a circuit jury trial uh, that they have set aside a, a set time. So when there is a jury trial, they already have that time, they're always on Fridays, or they're always on Thursdays, etc. Uh, what else did I say? PTR hearings. Um, so there's, you know, customers that will group PTR hearings and have the specific docket session or docket calendar that, that's related to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and show you how this district daily arraignments is set up and how it works with an event on a case. Can you uh, sort that in your uh, navigator by the month? Can you set up a rules that, you know, how you got the circuit docket, can you, can you do it by month? Yeah, like for so the month of September, this is our docket schedule, the month of October. Depending on the time length you set up your, your documents and only, or your dockets and only you and, and whoever decides that, if you only put your dockets out for a month at a time, you could do that, you could filter off docket instances that, that are in the past. So that's something, you know, we our, our labs are open, we get together and, and talk about that. But there's there some unique possibilities with filtering off, you know, stuff you don't want to see that are maybe in the past and you don't care about anymore, stuff like that. Uh, so I'm going to click on this. Again, I've already created that. If we have time, we still have some time in the class. Uh, if we have time at the end of me showing stuff, we'll go through and we'll actually create a docket. So what I created was a district daily arraignment docket. I'm going to click on that and open it up. And if you've never seen this before, this is what it looks like when you're configuring a docket calendar. So I gave it a name. I said the start date was going to be on uh, September 22nd, Monday, and run through the rest of the year. So it has to have a start and an end date. Okay. Um, active. We can do letter ranges. So you know, some dockets will you know let me. If you're pretty busy agency or pretty busy shop, maybe you have you know an arraignment day. Uh, I have a customer that calls it Zoo Day, and they do it on Wednesdays, and they start in the morning, and they go till they're done, uh, just because they have that that high of volume where they need that. And so sometimes the judge will sort it in you know an A to Z format. They'll just start at the beginning of the alphabet, and hear all the A's, B's, you know C's, and just go through that. So you can do a letter range here. You could set up a you know we're going to hear the A to M's. 
from A to noon, and then we're going to hear. So only defendants with the last name of A to M would get funnel. I didn't set that up for this one. Uh, the capacity is five on this one. Again, for simplicity's sake, I just set this up to run. You can see the time right here from eight to nine, and I said the capacity was five. So this judge, eight to nine on a daily basis, you know, not a high volume, so the capacity is five. Uh, so every day, Monday through Friday, uh, they're going to have this from 8 to 9. So you can choose a location, not required, but you can choose a location. So this one I set up to be in courtroom 1. Uh, and an instance type. So again, there's our instance type code table, and that's what's showing up <coughs> back here. Remember, we chose what instance type to choose. So I'm going to click on that again and continue to show that. Uh, moving down this path, again, the start time is 8 to 9, so I just said it's a one hour. Uh, cap of five maximum people. Down here under docket instances. So now here we have our docket calendar which is comprised of instances. So this is the frequency. How often does this occur? How often are we going to have a one hour from eight to nine with a capacity of five named daily arraignments? Well, I said I want it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday through Friday, weekly. So before I save, I'm going to come down here and there's a snap in called criteria. This is the stuff the instance. So if you remember my graphic, we have a calendar docket, which is comprised of docket instances, right? Remember there's a quiz afterwards, right? Calendar docket, docket instances, and those instances are comprised of events and criteria, such as case types or case events, certain agencies. So here I have a district court daily arraignment docket that I set up. And down here we have multiple uh, snap-ins in the criteria. So we have case types, event types, and agencies. So the first one I click on is case types. Well, this is my district court. So in my district court, I only in this scenario, I only hear criminal misdemeanor uh, cases and traffic cases, but this is specifically for criminal misdemeanors. So these are arraignments. So I've unchecked or I've unselected all of my other case types here, and I've just selected criminal misdemeanor. That means that in order to get an event to get scheduled on this docket calendar, it has to be a criminal misdemeanor case type. That's one piece of our criteria. The next piece is event type. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm going to take another drink of water. But same concept here. Same concept with event types. I can specify which events I want Justware to allow, or I want to allow Justware to schedule uh, on this docket. Right? And I only want arraignments because I've, I've pinned it down or I've filtered it down to be just arraignments, so I only want <coughs> arraignment events allow the automation to get scheduled to this docket. Uh, and then agencies, I have just the district court. So what district court is going to look at is the district court has to be an agency on the case in order to allow an event to get scheduled to this docket. So you can see where that comes in handy, you know, like my highway patrol scenario, where we wouldn't want traffic appearance cases to get scheduled to the highway patrol docket if the Highway Patrol wasn't an agency on that case, right? It might be like a, a Logan City Police Department. We don't want those getting mixed up. So that's where in this criteria you specify, okay, which agencies have to be on my case or, or need to be on my case to get an event scheduled at. So those are the our three criteria pieces. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show is docket involved names. So I said Monday through Friday. This is where, where I said, you know, Judge Joe Brown typically is going to take this Monday through Friday. And I just set it up with him. So, Judge Joe Brown is going to take, he's a docket involved person. I've added him here as a judge. I've added Sarah Tancredi as a court reporter. Officer Farva is our bailiff. Uh, Ralph Hopkins is our lead prosecutor. And Sean Holliday is our lead public defender. So oftentimes, when I, and I, I got your question yeah. over here one second. So oftentimes, we'll go into projects and they have a, a, some courts or some prosecutor's office. They'll have a lead prosecutor. They might not be the one on the case. They'll have a lead prosecutor present in court that has a similar schedule to the judge. You know, maybe. Rob Hopkins takes the, the first week of every month, and he's always the lead prosecutor in court representing the prosecutor's office. Might not be the specific you know, prosecutor on the case, etc. with the public defender. Hopefully that makes sense. Kind of like the judge. So that's kind of where I have this set up. These five people are going to be there Monday through Friday, um, Monday through Friday on, on every one of these docket instances. And before I get to your question, one second, I want to show one more thing. So when I save this, right now, I already have this created. This is pretty much the same process that I go through when I create this from scratch as if there wasn't one. When I create it, what it does is I said I want this to run 
Monday through Friday, from Monday the 22nd through the 31st, the end of the year. If you remember what it's going to do, whatever five, let's say that what, there's five months left, so September, October, November, December, so four months left. It's going to take four times five and create an instance. So if I click on Docket Instances, you can see that these are all the different instances. So we have one on the 22nd, the 23rd, the 24th, the 25th, the 26th, 27th, the 28th, our Saturday, Sunday. So then it picks back up on the 29th, 30th, 1st, 2nd. Does that make sense? So those are all our different instances of that docket. Shows a nice little feature here. The count is five. There are currently five uh, events already scheduled, or five cases, if you will, scheduled for this arraignment event. Okay, before I move on, you had a question over here. Okay, so um, in your criteria, Judge Joe Brown, now I have, he's only on for the month of September. And then Judge Judy comes on in October, and then Judge Brown goes back on. So do I have to create, Judge Judy's actually in the state. Do I have to create another docket instance and make this one shortened to the end of September and then create a new one for November for him and a new one for January for him if it's yep. on that sort of rolling calendar? So that's, that's a great question. And multiple answers are multiple ways to accomplish that. Yes and no, however you decide what you want to manage it. So I could set it up, you know what, this docket runs from now until the rest of the year. So as I look, this is what we call one of those parent-child relationships in just because you haven't heard that term. So right here, whatever instance, here I am in my docket instances, whatever instance I have selected here, those are my instance involved names. So you'll see the Judge Joe Brown. As I click on this, the same group of people will be there. So if I, I could do it one way, here's one way of doing it. I just leave it as is, and then I come down here and I just want to set it up for just a month. We, another way of grouping dockets is we have judge dockets, like judge specific dockets, where you'll just set up, you know, like you said, this is the daily docket for Judge Brown in the month of October. This is the one for the month of September. So there's multiple ways, feel free, uh, hopefully I answered your question, there's, there's a couple different scenarios, definitely get in touch with us, get in the lab tomorrow or something like that. Yeah, before I go on, did you have one more question? So on the prosecutor side of this, um, I would imagine that that calendar would be the my attorney's calendar of the cases that they're appearing on. And that that's how I would manage their daily caseload of cases that they're appearing on. So there's, there's, a, there's a couple different ways you could set it up, and I'm not going to put the Kootenai on the spot now. If we have time at the, at the end of the class here, I might ask them to, to speak to that. If not, if you remember, we have the learn from your peers thing tomorrow, which would be a great idea, or I would put you in touch, or we could talk after class how those guys have, how they're using the, the docket calendar. But again, it's funny how, how just where we're, there's, there's tons of different ways you can implement a certain process. It's just a matter of you know working with us and working with, with you, talking through your workflows to figure out what scenario would work best for you. Your hand, yeah. There are certain fields in there that once you say you cannot go back and edit, is there a logic behind that? Correct. Uh, well, I'm sure there's good logic. Uh, I didn't. I didn't develop. Oh, well, I'm with you. There's plenty. There, there are plenty. I'll be honest. There are plenty of things that you know. There's stuff. As cool as technology is, there's always something that we always want more, right? We always, we always want something more. Um, that's what our UX team is for. They constantly want ideas. Uh, of how to how to better use so I can't I'll be honest with you I can't sit here and tell you the logic behind everything I can behind some things but yeah there are certain things that you can see it, it's locked down um, and so that's where we have some customers that don't do long term dockets they'll just set them up for you know a month at a time and they have a specific role or, or specific you know, somebody in their office that manages the docket then once you used to you know they'll elongate that out. That even, Term or work with them. They'll, they'll lengthen that out and they'll set up a docket for, for, for a year or whatever. Um, and you have a couple of things, hopefully I'm not keeping you too long, I do have a couple of things, we have till 4.30 is when I, I still have a half hour if you guys are still interested, I have a lot of cool things to show you if you're still good to go. Can we have military time? Military time, meaning you want it to be displayed like, you know, 15, 15? Right. That's a great question. Uh, yes, it is. Is anybody using just? I've never implemented just for with military time. Is anybody using just for right now using military time? The so what? We try. The gerbil. So the gerbil, the XML, won't do it. So you've tried to do that. And we tried to do it for a minute. 
Yeah. Event type. Yeah. Okay. So I so I personally don't have experience uh, with that. I definitely know via reporting that it's possible. So like. If you want, which some people call it gerbil, because Dwimmel is a funny word, I don't know. Dwimmel is the XML that creates the, the screen you're looking at, the code behind it, some people call it gerbil. Um, reporting, we do that in reporting. As far as the in just where, I don't have any experience in that, so I, I would say no off the bat. I, I don't know the answer for that for sure. So can definitely follow. Again, business cards up here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going unless there's another question and another question over here. I just see there isn't any way to go in and if you set it up this way, you still have to manually go through and take out Thanksgiving and Christmas and close court dates and all that, so it doesn't get assigned to those dockets. No. <coughs> so if we scroll down, so that's a great question. It's going to take into account, oh, I didn't mean that like to offend you, like not true. No, it's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hopefully there's no offense taken. Um, so, <laughs> okay. so JustWare's database has a holiday calendar. Obviously, you know, uh, governments have more holidays than just like a generic holiday, right? So it might not fit everyone's unique mold. We have weird state holidays in Utah that, you know, you guys have my, you know, wherever you come from, you might have different holidays. It will take into account some of them. So like, for example, if I scroll down and I did daily, so if I open up my calendar, we have Thanksgiving on what, the 27th? So there's not going to be one on the 27th. It, I didn't go in and delete that, it doesn't do that. So for example, if I open that back up and I look at December, well we have 24th and 25th are Christmas, so if I, or Christmas Eve and Christmas, so if I scroll down there might be one on Christmas Eve, but there's not one on the 25th. So again, I don't know any places that actually record on Christmas Eve. Maybe there are, maybe there aren't. Great, there we go. So, it's there. I guess. Well, somewhere the holidays that recognizes? Not natively, but we could provide that list to you. I mean, if you contact us for, hey, how do I look in the Just Wear holiday calendar? To answer your question, though, this is where you come and manage it. We have need for, you know what? We have. And some people actually, I have a customer that created a holiday docket. And when they need to make up for like lost time because of Thanksgiving, now they have 200 you know, defendants that need arraigned versus the normal 100 they have on a daily basis. They have a holiday docket, so they'll set up two dockets like back to back to, to handle that. So there are certain ways, I don't want to dive too deep into, not to you know, shun away your questions, because I like these questions keep going. There are a couple things that not a lot of our customers see or remember or know that I, I definitely want to make a point of showing really quick before we get into just showing you whatever. So I'll, I'll, I'll come back to that. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I, I opened it up. I'm loving these questions, guys. So this is awesome, awesome discussion, uh, awesome diff different types of scenarios. So it will respect certain holidays just based off the generic uh, holiday calendar we have in the database. But you can come in here and let's say, you know what? We're going to have it on Christmas Eve the 24th, but Christmas is the 25th, and we're not going to do the 26th. So it's as simple as coming in here and deleting the 26th. So now the next one isn't going to be until the following Monday. If I need to add an extra one, you know what? Judge Joe Brown says, no way. We're having one on December 25th. Merry Christmas. <laughs> you can come in here, add one for the 25th. Just as easy as that. The same, uh, same docket same docket calendar, it'll just show up as another docket instance, right? So you can definitely add that. Um, so what I'm going to do is go back to my, I'm going to open up a case and show you, so I have my friend here, Gresham Morgan. Okay. The just work calendar. <coughs> yep, the just work calendar. Uh, for those of you who didn't hear, she asked if the docket calendar coordinates with the, with the Outlook. It's just a just for calendar, so like your name and calendar, your user specific. And it's on a user basis, so if you want it to sync to Outlook, you can decide it, but you know, somebody else might not want that. So here's, here's a case, and I, I want to show you this really quick before we get into anything else, and then I'm open to basically any questions. So here's how this typically works. Just Wars automation piece uh, of docket, and they have a whole, like I said, I have a whole slew of stuff. I can go until 4:30 if you guys want. I know it's passing out of time. So, um, I don't have any events scheduled, 
have some agencies, have some case involved parties for this Gretchen Morgan case, I have a charge, I need to schedule her for an arraignment, right? And I can let JustWare's automation do that for me. So when I add an event, it'll say, go and find me the next available docket that accepts arraignments, right? And I've fed that criteria. I said it has to be a criminal misdemeanor case. I have that. I have to have the district court as an agency. I have that. Now what events am I going to accept? I'm going to accept an arraignment. So first, I want to open up my docket calendar. And here's my district daily arraignments. If I hover over that, I get a nice little blurb. Okay, it's 8 to 9, blah, blah, blah. District daily arraignments is what I called it. This is the 22nd. It's going to go from 8 to 9 a.m. Down on the bottom, I see where it says 5 of 5. That means I'm at my capacity, right? So it's not going to, even though today, even though Gretchen got arrested today, I already have stuff lined up for, for Monday. So what it's going to do is just where it's going to go and say, ah, that one's already full. Where's my next district daily arraignment docket? It's going to bounce over here to this one. Zero out of five. So it's going to place her right there. So it's going to automatically do that. And we'll watch that. So I come in here. I have my arraignment. All I have to do is save. It's the only thing I have to do. Courtroom comes in automatically. It knows that the docket instance is in courtroom one. It's at 8 a.m. And it went to the 23rd. So now if I come back to my doc, and you can see in this docket instance field, it selected that one. I click on my docket calendar. If I refresh this little calendar, and I hover over that, we now have one of five, right? Because it saw that this one had met its capacity. Again, that's why I chose such small numbers, so we can kind of demonstrate this. But it met its capacity at five, so it said, ah, that one's full. Judge doesn't want to hear more than five on that day. We're going to hear it on the next one. So she got scheduled uh, to one to five. So here's something really cool I'll just throw out there. Um, here's the docket calendar inside our docket management tool. Right? We just we just got it set up and we can see all our docket instances. Let's say next week, because there's only one on Tuesday, right? If I hover over that, so we're looking at two different places. This is just a general docket calendar for like viewing purposes. You just want to see your calendar. I'm gonna close that. Here I am inside my docket management, and I can see I'm just looking at instances for the specific docket I'm looking at. So I'm only looking at district daily arraignments. Let's say I want, you know what, there's only one here. And so he doesn't want, the judge doesn't want to come in at you anymore. And he's like, eh, let's just do a 10. So you can just drag and drop. Now I go to Gretchen's case. So this said it was at 9.23 at 8 a.m. If I refresh. So obviously I only have one case that's tied to that, to that docket. However, my capacity could be set to 100. And let's say the judge said, you know what, I'm playing in the golf tomorrow, golf tournament tomorrow. Or, you know, awful something. Something could happen where the judge couldn't make it. So, you know what, I have to reschedule these to the next day, and I'll hear them all the next day. So I only have the one Gretchen Morgan case on there that I moved, or all these five, you know, for example. I could move these over to, I just lost it. I can move these from Monday to Tuesday, and if you remember, there's five on there. <coughs> so if I go and open up my Fernando, if I were to go and open up any of these five cases, I didn't have to open up those cases individually or anything. Those automatically got updated to be scheduled. So if we have like email notifications or event reminders set up, all of those now coordinate with the new date to the question we had earlier. If the event date got changed, those reminder times will now respect the new date. So you know you have you know, subpoenas going out, possibly batch subpoenas to you know victims and witnesses or whatever to to have them come to court. So the date got changed, so now there'll be a new you know, batch nightly process where their subpoenas get printed and their notices of, of court hearing get printed and etc. So I always like we like to show that it becomes really easy to manage that way. Um, show you what that looks like in court. So here I am, let's say it's Monday morning and I'm in court. We call this our in-court processing screen. So I click on my docket calendar and now I double-clicked on today's docket. So what this looks like, 
here are my five cases. Remember, we met capacity, five of five cases. And has anybody ever seen this screen? Obviously, the people who are probably using this. These are my these are my five cases. Down below is that parent-child relationship, right? So here is I am on a Lincoln Burroughs case. These are case-involved parties. If I click on Michael Schofield, this is his case. These are, these are his charges. These are his events. If I click on Fernando Super. So in court, whoever might be using it, you know, your prosecutor, your, your court clerk, or whoever, you know, this scenario, whatever fits the boot, right? So whoever this scenario fits for, they could be in court, uh, sort this up here by, you know, name. So I'm going to help here alphabetical, in alphabetical order, A to Z. If I want to complete that, I'm in court, Sucre, he, uh, Fernando Sucre case, the judge hears him, he gets arraigned. I can mark that to uh, completed. You don't have to save in between each one. Obviously, sometimes our in-court processes are pretty fast and fluid, so you can just wait to save at the end. But if I save this in between, if the you know, judge, if I have a huge long docket of 100 people and the judge takes like a 15-minute recess, right, and then we're going to come back and hear the other 50 or something, the other half, if I could save, and then that list would shorten. So now you can see because I completed that <coughs> event, and we can spend some time in the lab or, or, or on another occasion talking about events and event statuses. But now you see only four, right? I completed the Fernando Sucre event, it's completed, and now it's off of my list. So now if I'm, you know, court clerk and the judge wants to know, hey, how many, how many do we have left? And we only got four, you know, so there, you, you can keep track here of, uh, of counting. I want to show a couple other things. I, I do have your question. Let me show two more things that are semi-related to this. So these four fields over here, I've renamed to be interpreter, private defense counsel, public defender, and in custody. For those of you who have seen this screen, those are your flag fields. And you see flag fields all over in Just Work. This is one of those things that not many people know about docketing. So if you're using docketing, maybe you do know about this, maybe you don't. But this can be really useful, right? So sometimes we're in court. And the judge, you know, I guess out of courtesy, you know, usually we walk into that and it's usually out of courtesy. Here's all the private defense counsel first, kind of recognizes, let's get them in and out. Maybe there's an interpreter, right? So let's hear the interpreter. The interpreter has already showed up and they had to drive an hour to get there. Let's, you know, hear them first or, or vice versa in order public defenders first. And then maybe if they're in custody. I've been to a court where uh, they do all the in custody via video arraignments. And so they want to get those done and over with at the very beginning. So the, you know, the officers in the, in the jail can put them back in their cells or whatever. So those are those flag fields. And what I wanted to show you, because I think this is cool, and again, I'm available you know, all day tomorrow in the lab after I teach this class to, to go over more, whatever we don't cover. But what I want to show you is this piece right here with these flag fields. So these are actually, sometimes people's first instinct is to say, oh, here I am on my case. Those must be those flag fields here in my case involve party snapping. They're actually not. Uh, they are case attributes. So if I go to my case attributes code table. <clears throat> and if you worked in implementation with your project team or now, you probably found out that your code tables, whatever you name your code, it doesn't really matter. It's just something unique, right? Sometimes you can use it in reports or documents, but it doesn't really matter. This is the one place where it can matter. So you'll notice right here I have five attribute codes that are flag one, flag two, flag three, flag four, or flag five. This is the only place, now don't get me wrong, I told you I'm a little OCD, so I definitely would highly recommend some type of naming code convention with your codes, you know, so like events, you know, EV001, and you can go from there, so you can be organized. You don't have to, that's just me, that's kind of what we recommend, but regardless, you know, our codes don't matter, so I have a, a warrant attribute and a, and a weapons involvement WI. These ones do matter. Flag 1, flag 2, flag 3, flag 4, and flag 5. I didn't have one in the scenario for the additional field available, but I did create one for interpreter, private defense counsel, public defender, and in custody. So you'll notice when I go back to my in-court processing screen as we call it, or our docket case details screen, here are my four cases. If I wanted to hear all the interpreters first, if there was an interpreter box checked, that would mean that that case has an interpreter case attribute in it. I don't have any, so I want to hear my private defense counsel. So I can quickly sort that to the top or filter on private defense counsel equals true. Maybe my judge wants me to hear all the people with private defense counsel first. So yeah, okay, if I had a ton of people in here, maybe I just have three cases, 
In this scenario, I only have one, right? So I can filter and show only this and hear the Michael Schofield case because he's got a private defense counsel. Same thing with uh, interpreter, public defender, in custody. If I wanted to hear all my in custody people first, I could sort that list to the top. And we could start from there. So, okay, Lincoln, Bur Lincoln Burroughs is in custody. Let's hear him first and get him out of the road. So I know that was kind of a quick overview of how those can be used. But this is, this is pretty powerful in, in, in a courtroom setting of how to you know, automate some things in court and sort how your, your judge or your, your lead prosecutor might want to have these things heard. Where are those chosen, you said? They're event-specific? These are case attributes, yep. And it's the only place that I'm aware of and that I've been told from our product developers where the code actually has significance outside of just, you know, manageability. Obviously, managing your codes can be hairy if you have a ton of them, so obviously a naming convention is useful and recommended. However, these are named specific to be flag one, flag two, three, four, and five. And you can obviously name the description whatever you want. However, in the import processing screen or in the docket case details in this specific screen, those flag fields are specifically looking for any case attributes on the case where the code is flag one through five. So that can, that can come in. Uh, come in pretty handy. I want to briefly mention a couple other things, and I, uh, I don't know if I'll show them on screen. I'll show one of them. So you can provide the, via security profiles, you can give somebody the ability to override uh, the capacity. So you know what, there's only one schedule for Tuesday, right? We have the one out of five on Tuesday, but we have five out of five. Maybe the judge says, you know what, squeeze that one in. So I can add, when I add my hearing before I save, or when I add my array before I save, and let it automatically choose the next available docket, I can click on this little docket picker icon, and it'll pull up my list of available, you know, my, my list of available dockets, and it will allow me to choose, you know, which one. So you can override, etc. You can allow that permission, or you cannot allow that permission. The other thing with, uh, with overriding and allowing permission, is dealing with conflicts. So, I'm sorry, I thought I'd have more time in this, but I just want to briefly mention it. So let's say Judge Judy has a daughter named Judy Jr., right? Judy Jr. gets arrested. She can't, obviously, you know, or shouldn't, I guess. You know, should doing, should, shouldn't, maybe. Anyway, so let's say they have a conflict of interest, right? So let's say Judge Judy comes forward and says, you know, I'm, I'm going to re recuse myself from, from her case or from being arraigned or whatever, etc. We can have... Uh, Let's see, let me open up that. <coughs> that case really quick. So here's Judy Jr.'s case. She's selling drugs, I think. <coughs> possession of drugs. <coughs> oh, possession without a license. She was framed. She was framed. Okay. So here I, here I could come in. Judy Jr.'s the defendant. But I could come in and I could add... Judge Judy... Whoops. as a recused involvement type. And so that way, when I go to set any events, when I let JustWare automatically assign those events to a specific docket instance, it's going to go through and say, don't let me assign this event to any of Judge Judy's dockets. Right? So that's one way to handle conflicts. Very useful, very handy. Again, I'm kind of breezing through this because we're almost out of time. we got about 10 more minutes left. There's another way to do conflicts, and that's on a name-to-name -name relationship. So if I click on Judy Jr.'s name record, we can have a relationship of conflict or disqualified. And so JustWare will look at those two places. So when you're using JustWare's docket picker or the automation tool in docket, you can set up those conflict types, and it'll look at those two places. It'll look and see if there's uh, a disqualified or a recused case involved party type as well as it'll go to relationships and say is there a disqualified relationship type? and the way this knows obviously we're just displaying a description here and I've named this description conflict or disqualified and on the case I've named I've named this involvement type recused what that actually is and I'll show you is they have a specific master code so the case involvement type of recused is right here and in the type you can see that I've chosen seven disqualified. So that's how JustWare knows. It goes and says, okay, are there any disqualified involvement types on my case? Likewise, there is a name relationship. So if I back out in my code tables and go to names, and I go to related people, 
and I come down here to conflict and disqualified under type, there's a two of disqualified. So that's where JustWare is going to look and not let me schedule that. And again, for, for sake of time, I know there's yeah. some questions out there. What will actually happen is when you come here and you try to schedule an arraignment, you see there's this little conflicts. So there is a conflict right here. So we already have one. There's a conflict because Judge Judy, so I can click on these details, and it'll show me why there's a conflict. Judge Judy is recused on this case. So it'll show me why she's been recused. Maybe there's no other option, and again, if there isn't any other option, here's where you can provide certain individuals based on security profiles, excuse me, to have the ability to override police. So, I'm trying to touch base. Yeah, go ahead. And the name that was the, uh, relationship. Depending on how you guys are using relationships, either one will work. If you create the relationship from Judge Judy's name record, or if you create the relationship from, you know, I created a secondary relationship, so I should put that. Depending on it'll look for that relationship between the two people. Yep. So I breezed through a lot of that at the end. I know there's a question over here. Again, I'm teaching this class tomorrow. If I can get through some more stuff, otherwise I'm available all day tomorrow. I'll be at the night at noon tomorrow. Um, Feel free to come ask me questions. I have a bunch of business cards. You got a question here. Past events. If I, for some reason, have an attorney that brings a case up to court, but I want a record that they were in court at that time, later in the day, I can't put in, if they've got a docket instance, if I'm running it, I can't put in that, unless I put it in under a different type of name. How do so, I do pa a past event? to make it so that it was a part of a past docket? Right, so it was part of that docket. How do I get it to stay? Because it'll, it'll, what it does is just takes me to the next event. What, what officer are you I'm sorry, what were you, what Public agency? Public Defender's uh, Spokane. Public Defender, and you guys are using the docket manager tool? Because golly, uh, imagine an attorney not giving you a file to update and then going to court again, right? <laughs> that never happens. Jeez, really? <laughs> so, <laughs> That's a, that's a good scenario. I totally get I mean, I know what's going to happen. So, that seems interesting. Obviously, you're not going to be able to go back in time and right. assign it to a docket. Um, we had to create a miscellaneous docket. To put and that on. We have to put it in the notes what kind of docket So, that's something, that's something I'd actually be interested in. Sitting down, or, or having you get in touch with, with Jeremy or Ben, on so we can sit down. And that's where that's kind of where I come in on the implementation team is consulting and helping figure out different ways to use JustWorks. It's obviously a, a business process that you guys have or a workflow that you're trying to solve, and we want to help with that. So something like that, obviously, we'll be going through and try and figure out what we can do. That, but I can definitely be interested in talking to you about Was there another question on this side of the room? You have one over here? If you go in, I thought it worked when I tried it. If you go into the docket calendar under my justware, under my, my justware. Under my justware. Yeah. Open the my justware session. Okay. And then go to one of your calendar instances. Um, well, I don't have any on okay. here because so, I'm not. And then if you add Judge Judy to that instance, when she wasn't there before, it will, it will populate as, a, as an instance of both names for all of them for the rest of the month. Like if a judge retires, yeah. judge. So if it was Tuesday the 23rd, and Jane Doe would have added there, and you would retroactively back on the shoulders with that, would that not help? If it goes backwards? Well, I mean, if it was the 23rd, and I added them as a document. That's something I'd, I'd have to test out and, and see. So you, you're saying that's what you currently do, or are you asking if that's possible? That. You think no, you've, done that. That. you've done that. Okay. I, I look at that. I do want to show. Okay. I do want to show one thing. So I created a, a quick launch report here. These are three system reports that are awesome for dockets, and I, I failed to bring this up earlier. Some people already left the room, so tell your battle buddies that, uh, about these. So these are in system reports. I just created a simple report, so 
I can have a quick hyperlink to it. Um, but they're all available in your normal system reports down here under utilities. The three names are calendar dockets, calendar docket instances, and docket schedule. So I'm going to use my last five minutes to kind of show this and take any questions as needed. So I click on calendar dockets. So here I have my four docket calendars that I have set up, kind of giving me a brief overview. My start date and my end date is for a year from 917 to 917, 2015. And what I have it set up as is this is going to, you know, capacity one, capacity ten every week. Just kind of a brief overview of what my docket. So this is just an out of the box report. Could be useful for whoever, whoever your docket manager person is. Um, I'm going to show you another report, which is calendar docket instances. Again, sometimes it's just a matter of exploring what reports are going to work for you. Um, I am going to type in. Let's see. The day range here again for, for the rest of the year and parameters as you've seen some of our other system reports to select uh, which dockets. I'm just going to select all so you can see what it looks like. This is just going to show me all of my different uh, docket calendars that I have. So when I click view report, you guys can see that. That's too big or too small. Um, so here are my instances. I can expand on that. And obviously, that's probably, I won't expand on that one. Well, I will just to show you. But this is going to show every instance, right? And I have one every day, Monday through Friday, through the rest of the year. So I scroll down, and that's a huge list. And let me change that to 100% so we can see the whole thing. So I have some options here. Capacity, this one's full to 100%. So if the judge is like, ah, I'm thinking of going on vacation on next Wednesday through Friday, what's our capacity or what's our utilization of of next week, you know, can we can we move those around? Can we move them forward, etc. So you can so you can see the utilization at 100 percent. View details. I can click on view details. He's, here are all the cases, or here are all the case events that I'm hearing on that specific docket instance. So if I look at the highway stroll in quarter two. Four out of five. Again, from right here, this could be you know my launch screen, my my just for screen. I can launch that session. So if I open this session, it's going to take me right to my default docket case details screen or my import processing screen. I'm ready to go. The one thing I also failed to mention when I was showing this screen is case summary. All these snap-ins, whatever snap-ins. If you want to use this in court, in an in-court session, speed is obviously more often than not an issue depending on uh, the volume of your court and how fast you guys go. So we recommend working with our project management teams or our account management support to get rid of any of these snap-ins that you're not going to be using in court. So what's happening here is these four cases, it's loading the case summary report four times, right? Because as I click through these names, it's loading the case summary four times. So if I don't need the case summary in court and I just need certain tabs, certain information, like the you know the filing cabinet, uh, if I just want to see certain things in here, try and limit that. So we can work with you on deleting all unnecessary snap-ins or tabs from that import processing screen. I want to show one more report, and that's the docket schedule, which oftentimes we'll go into a courtroom or we'll go on site with a customer and they'll have this on a TV or on a computer screen for general public to see or whatever. Um, this is just, these are all the, the hearings that are, or, or all the events today, or for Monday. So I have this running from basically a month from November 7th, or September 17th to October 17th. I've selected everything by default, all courtrooms. And it's just going to show me a list. Okay, so on 8 a.m. on Monday, these are all the people I'm hearing. So this is kind of maybe a public facing report if your information is public, who, who's going to be heard on these days. So I wanted to briefly show those. I think the docket management tool lends itself, again, not only to, to courts, but to prosecutors. Obviously, we have a public defender's office using it. So I've used it all the time. I'm here until you guys want me to be for questions. And thanks for coming. I'd love to hear feedback from me if you fill those things out. Business cards up on the table. So thank you very much. Thank you.